There is little to be found at the edge of space, but it may be about to change. This is Phaser 35. It flies in a deserted part of the Earth's atmosphere, high above jets and far below satellites, and it could revolutionise military surveillance. Phaser 35 is a solar-powered, high-altitude, pseudo-satellite platform. It's a very lightweight, huge and very long endurance, unmanned aircraft system. I say very lightweight, it weighs about 150 kilograms, which is probably about the same as you and I. It's called Phaser 35. The 35 refers to its wingspan, it's 35 meters. Now that's the same size as an airliner. It's huge, but it only weighs 150 kilos. That means it's able to go up to heights way above normal air traffic, up in 60, 65,000 feet. Um, where it can operate in constant sunlight, obviously during the day, and at night time it operates off batteries that are charged during the day. So the solar power enables it to have this persistence where it can stay airborne for up to a year. At the height it's at, at 60 odd thousand feet, it's above all the other traffic, above most of the weather, and it gives us a huge field of regard for a surveillance system so it can look a long way. So it stays up for a long while and it can look a long way. Those are two of the real key attributes for any sort of surveillance platform. So how do we currently do surveillance? First, satellites. They're good at their job, they're constantly watching, but they're expensive to put up and can't be moved or brought down. Rather, a one-trick pony. Manned aircraft can have a host of high-tech kit on board, but they only offer surveillance for a few hours at a time. They need to take off from somewhere nearby and huge teams and resources are needed to make it all happen. Humans can man observation posts on the ground, but they have a limited field of view and people need breaks. Phaser 35 sits at the edge of the stratosphere. The data gathered is similar to other platforms. It's the way it operates that could be a game changer. I think we have to imagine a, a, a fleet of these aircraft constantly airborne rather than just one. So you'd be, you would, you would assemble them, you would launch them from a launch and recovery site somewhere appropriate, somewhere ideally around the equator, which is where we get most sunlight, obviously. So what we do is we put it together, we'd launch it up in a, a sort of cylindrical uh, piece of airspace up to 60,000 feet, send it to uh, you know, park it somewhere in the sky. Uh, again, round about the equator somewhere would be good because you get maximum amount of sunlight. And then when it's needed to be somewhere to do an operational task, we'd send it there. And we could send it anywhere in the world within a week, maybe 10 days at the sort of speed it'll fly. It'll be very slow. And again, that's a, a change of mindset for aviators. We're used to flashing around the place at hundreds of miles an hour. This thing will be going sort of faster than running, human running speed, but it'll, it'll, it'll get anywhere in the world within a week or so. But when we're talking in terms of being airborne for a year, a week or so is, is not of any consequence at all. So once you have it on task doing what it needs to do and you've got your other ones somewhere else waiting to be tasked, then it's a management task of sending new ones up to restock the car park, de deploying from the car park to the operational area and bringing the one that's near the end of its life back home for refurbishment, refitting and relaunching. I think it will be a game changer, really, uh, bringing this into a military environment, because not only will it give you uh, enhanced surveillance opportunities uh, by giving you a quite a wide reaching uh, vehicle up in the stratosphere that can maintain station for 365 days of a year, um, but it also has the opportunity to start to connect up to other air vehicles or other ground stations and start to transfer data in real time uh, in, in, in some instances. Instances, or, or also maybe set up a network uh, across a large area which will enhance communications for military users. So there's lots of opportunity here where you know a phaser can, can provide advantage on its own or indeed provide advantage as a, as a wider product uh, alongside a number of different, uh, different either air vehicles or ground stations. The intention is not to replace, but to complement current systems. A car park of solar planes permanently in the sky awaiting deployment. A surveillance platform that never looks away.
And of course, there could be a multitude of civilian applications, mobile phone coverage or monitoring icebergs. It might not be obvious to look at me, but I'm not in my first flush of youth anymore. Um, I've been interested by and excited by aeroplanes since I was about four years old. And I joined the Air Force and got to fly in aeroplanes and was very excited about all of that. And now coming towards the end of my career, this platform has got me as excited as I ever was. It's just extraordinary. Watching it kind of soar up into the, into the sky, it's just, it's really inspiring because it shows that, you know, when you're, so I'm used to working on things like Typhoon, things like Port. This is a very different aircraft. The possibilities are only limited by people's imagination. What could we use this for? This could be operationally available within a year of us completing flight trials. Now that may seem like a long time in this modern world where things are instantly available. But in terms of aviation assets, it's the blink of an eye. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.